Good morning, I'm, I'm Elsie, and I'm very happy to be here. And I'm going to talk something a little bit about Chinese calligraphy today. And first, I'm going to introduce myself. I have been teaching arts um, in the past 22 years, and I'm helping my students to apply our program for uh, our high school and also university in the USA and the Canada as well. And I've been learning uh, Chinese calligraphy from my uh, several teachers uh, who, are, who are in China and also uh, in, in Canada. Uh, so my um, calligraphy teacher, Zhu Fu, and he encouraged me to help um, school board to produce uh, a very short introduction about Chinese calligraphy today. So. Uh, basically, um, I'm learning, uh, I'm doing some researches about contemporary Western arts and a master program at York University right now. And I'm going to continue uh, doing my researches in a couple of years. I'm going to finish my PhD maybe within eight years. This is my plan. So, uh, here we go. This is all the connections I have right now. So, from the left, to the right, I, there are going to be five different uh, scripts. Um, so I'm going to talk about a little bit about them. And also on the table, so here is a little bit of very short, brief uh, introduction of Chinese calligraphy here. So basically from, from the Qing Dynasty to the present, Chinese calligraphy uh, has a 3,000 years history. It's a very, very long period. So, and calligraphy began with uh, inscriptions on altar bones in the Shang Dynasty. That means in 3,000 years ago, people start writing, or I will say carving something on animals' bones. They chose um, turtle's bones as the major materials. And at that time, 3,000 years ago, Chinese didn't invent paper and also the brush. So they use the knife to carve the scripts on the bones. Okay, um, and eventually um, Chinese calligraphers spreading and developing with the purpose of carrying messages for dominant purpose, basically for their for dominant purpose to create unique brush works. And we use brush. Here we go. This is the part of the some of my brushes I bought here, and. Uh, in, <coughs> in the early year, the brush is very, very short. It's very short. And in the recent year, it's getting longer and longer and even longer. My teacher, Shifu, she, he has a very, very long brush. And some brushes made, all the brushes made up, made up animals fur. So this one is harder. It's made as the combination of coyote and, and the goat. It's mixed, so it touches a little bit hard. And this one is, is, is kind of soft. It's made by goat. It's very hard to control. So every time when you when people start uh, doing their calligraphy, we have to hold the our brush straight up. You cannot tilt it in the beginning when you're a beginner. But eventually you can try every direct directions. And when I, I remember when I started learning uh, calligraphy when I was five years old, my, my my daddy forced me to stand, up, stand in front of the table and he, he put um, his fist between my body, my tummy and the table and also I have, my, my elbow cannot touch the table as well. So I have to keep that pose for one hour every day. Yeah, It helped me to make sure my arm moving, the motion is very stably and easily. So in the first, we use bigger brush. Beginner use a bigger brush, but advanced use a smaller brush. Bigger brush gonna help you to control, control the pressure, control the motion. And eventually when you get used to um, the materials and also the ink and the water, you gonna you can switch to any kind of brush you like to choose. And still I cannot use the gold one or a bunny for a while because it's too soft. It's too soft. I'm using this brush mostly, this one, to do my practice every day. It's not quite long and 
this heart can touch a spirit heart. Another thing about calligraphy is the ink. Is the ink. Uh, I think the hardest part is control. How to control the ink with the uh, the water, the percentage. Like if you dip a lot of water, if you like, if the brush carry too much water and the less ink, whenever you touch. When you touch the rice paper, this is a rice paper. All the ink gonna spreading very, very quickly. And the, the basically, you cannot see anything, any writing on on the paper. The only thing you can see is a block, block, water. You're gonna feel very upset about that. So for the beginners, we recommend use the ink, pure ink, more ink, less water. But my teacher, um, my teacher, my, uh, I have a lot of teachers, they, they use a more water, half, half, like 50% of ink, 50% of water. They blend them really well because they are moving really quickly, very fast. So the ink won't spreading too horribly and you can get a very good result. And another thing is we have two different kinds of rice paper. And one with a coat, another one without coat. The one with coat is very good for writing because it will prevent the ink spreading too much or too quickly. And another rice paper without coat is used for painting, for Chinese painting, traditional painting. Painting, we still use the same ink, but we're going to mix it with a lot, a lot of water, blending with that. It's very depends on what kind of um, topic the, the artist want to paint on for, the, for their uh, works. Um, so, let me see. And, and, and at the same time, uh, calligraphy has uh, its own set of rules for writing, which typically involve writing vertically from top to bottom. We usually write like typically, vertically top to bottom and also from right to left. That's all the, uh, the reading habit. Because in the Asian China, people, we don't have the very tall reading table. Everybody basically, like the Jap Japanese people, we, we kneel laying on the floor and our reading table is really, really short. And um, when people are reading, they have to roll up rolling this, so I, I show you. People in, uh, in Asian China, people are rolling this and put on the table. Their reading habit is whenever they start reading from, from the right side and they read a little bit, then they open this a little bit, they roll it up, they keep reading, so that's why all the characters, scripts, starting from right to left until they finish. Until they finish. So that's why the uh, the, the writing habits. The, the I will say that's the rule of basically all the contemporary artists they have to follow. So this is the the our collections right now so far. We don't have a lot. Of so, but it's looking to like four sides already, four different scripts. So, very neat one is called a standard, standard script. That means people hold brush. Oh, the artist, she used a very, very short, a very short brush, and write carefully, neatly, and very slowly. And basically, she, her elbow cannot touch the paper. I have to make sure, have to keep, away from the paper. And sometimes we use another another hand to hold our brush, just prevent if we drop something or we shaking the table or shaking the arm, it's gonna ruin the whole writing. So in the beginning, so she when she worked on this, she had to make sure the room is quiet, everything was away from her. She gonna start writing from the top and writing very, very slowly, carefully. And she can take a break. 
and the whole writing finishing took like two days. No, no, no longer than two days. Then, yeah, this is called a standard. You can take a very close look at this. Our work is very, very neat, very small, and very clear. That basically, if you know Chinese characters, you can read that. Okay, so this is the um, Xin style, Xin Shu. That means you still can read it, but it's more flexible, more relaxed. And Qigong is the very famous uh, art calligrapher in China. He used to be the president of the China uh, Association, but he passed away in 2005. So my parents uh, purchased some of these uh, calligraphers, and then I think around 2000 years. It's very, very good. He's very good at doing the Xin style. And you can read, so it's still like, this is a pair of the writing, and we're reading from the left to right. So this is the, the first one, and this is the second one. And you can still can read this. Compared to the standard, it's, it's very, I will say, it's really very flexible, very free. You can feel the freedom of that. And this is the third one, my teacher, Shu Fu. <laughs> he wrote this, it's called the Li Shu. Li Shu. Uh, no, 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 Li Shu. We don't have Li style right now. This is Zhuan Shu. That show is very old, old scripts. It's basically, you can see this, like 2,000 years ago or 3,000 years ago, people wrote this. This is the very beginning, okay? Then eventually people uh, start writing like this. Then recently, a lot of people writing that, writing this style. And, but this is the very, very beginning. So basically, you can recognize some of the words like this is so like this is the car and this is the farm and the most of them is hard to read. <laughs> hard to read and this is the left and this is the right. And compared to those two, they both call chop, chop style. That that means it's the uh, this is the semi this is a semi cursive script, this is a cursive script. And my teacher told me this is a pretty much standard um, cursive scripts and it's, it's so free just free yourself and the brush work you don't have to follow exactly the rule like the kai the standard rule the standard script you have to follow exactly the rules but this one is just free yourself for yourself and this is the one this is a very interesting because they, they're they're the same uh, script but my teacher, uh, Shifu, told me because he, he be working on Pollock, the art, the contemporary uh, Pollock, like he uses spreading a lot of uh, paints on the on the canvas. So uh, Shifu com combined the Pollock, the style with his style and do a kind of crazy, <laughs> crazy uh, scripts on this one. So he called this the artwork. He called this a study, and a study, and a study, and a study. But only this one is called artwork. Really early like uh, scripts that most of the Chinese study wrote this in 2000, between 2000 and 3000 years ago. And people start writing the Xin style, because it's easy to read. And, it, and also it's, um, people can free, free themselves. Okay, um, from, uh, from Tao Dynasty um, to present, a lot of Chinese calligraphers they love writing uh, Xin scripts because first it looks very elegant, and second it's not hard to read, and the third you don't have to spend too much time like write very carefully. Basically, you can free yourself. And this one is the standard standard uh, script. That means you have to pay a lot of attention, you have perfect focus, you can concentrate on this very slow motion writing, and usually it's, it's, it takes a very long time, and it doesn't allow any mistake to happen on this. But if any mistake happen on this side, that's fine, because you can call this, oh, this is part of my style, this, this is the artwork. And also I'm gonna talk about the space between each character. Um, in Chinese uh, traditional painting, the white space 
is very important, and a lot of uh, artists they don't want to paint um, everything like fill up everything on the paper. They really you need a lot of long blank space because they call the blank space as part of the composition. So does the uh, the delivery. You can see between each character, you can see it still have a lot of space, and also the connections, the the stroke, the brush stroke. They connect each other, and most of the artists they didn't, they didn't uh, put every single character too close to each other or too far away. Except the standard one, it's very um, special one. It's, it's called standard. You have this reason, right? It's called standard. But other four uh, scripts, um, like artists basically they can create their art. So there's a little uh, connection between. Chinese traditional painting and the Chinese calligraphy because first they both they have a lot in common. First they both use brush. They use brush. They use big brush. They use this very, very thin brush. Very depends on what kind of style they're gonna do. And some artists they use very, very, very long brush so they can create a strong brush stroke and all the ink is spreading all over on the paper. And some artists, they are doing very neat, elegant, like poetry painting, painting the ancient uh, Chinese women, their their life size, what they do every day, their everyday life, basically. So they use very, very tiny brush, and they're gonna apply different layers on that. But there's a little some there's a little difference between because sometimes I'm doing a watercolor painting as well, the Western one, the Western watercolor painting. And I found something very in common because they both use brush. They both use paints blending with water. But the very difference is the Chinese painting, you have to make sure it's only one time success. If you fail the first time, you have to go over again. But for the Western watercolor painting, if you fail the first one and you can figure out, hmm, I can use the secondary cover color to cover that. But for Chinese painting, because you only have ink, it's black and white, it's only black and white. If you fail, that means you just screw up your work and have to redo it again. And the second thing is you both, like Chinese traditional painting and watercolor painting, they can apply a different layers on that. The first layer, the, I, I think is don't apply too much ink or color. First layer very thin, light color, that's basic, we call this a coat, this first coat. Then eventually you have to wait it dry. Let it dry a little bit, like 70%, 80% dry, you can apply the second coat. When the second coat touch the first coat, you will see the ink spreading just very slowly, and it won't, quick, it won't be that quick. And if you, if you don't wait, you apply the second layer directly on the first coat, you will see two layers, two ink, two colors. They're spreading, they touch each other, they're spreading horribly quickly. Is I call that fair too. But it very depends on what kind of uh, thing you wanna you wanna create on your art. If you wanna do uh, the landscapes, that's okay. That's okay. You can blend a lot of water on that. And if you wanna if you wanna work on the animals, furs, birds, flowers. Young ladies, their clothing, their clothing, their accessories. Make sure you have to use the rice paper with coat on that, and also use very kind of dry brush, carrying very less water, a lot of paint or ink. We use paint too. We have color too. With less ink, uh, more ink, less water, and you're gonna draw very slowly, but. In the ancient time, we don't have pencil. We cannot do like quick sketch on the rice paper. That's impossible. But they have their own way. Usually, they have something under the paper, and they can trace over it. They use an ultra thin brush to trace over them to prevent any mistake showing on portraits. You know the face and also the gestures too, because the hands drawing hands and the face is the most hard part in the Asian Chinese. And take a very very long time. Usually, they take half a year or a couple of months to finish one work um, to paint the, uh, the portrait, I mean, the ladies, and the, and 
words. And also have to see if you have both verbs. Okay, so um, this is a very interesting piece of uh, our uh, piece of work. And this is the called the Rubbling the Hand Dynasty tile. That means um, you can see this is not a painting. This is the people carved on the tile on the wall. And when people bury their master, then we urinate on the on the wall of the tomb, tomb, tomb room. And the people carve their before life and also after life. And the story of this piece is I can show you. So in the in the crowd there's a tree. This is a tree. And this is the leader. The the leader riding the horse. There's the three horses. And the leader holding the flame. A flaming torch that's gonna guide the rest of the, there's the two people very important people they are in charge of the battlefield and this is the middle one is a commander and this one is called the prime minister and this this person there's the two person one is the, the uh, there's a, the one on the side of the um, serve this uh, prime minister all the time so he gonna he 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 he, gonna, he was in charge of the planning, the plan, the whole battle, and he is the one commander gonna um, guide all the shoulders on the battlefield, the real battlefield, because that person won't show up show up on the battlefield, and all those curly decorations, those are cloths, very fancy cloths, and you can see this is the dragon's head. They are facing, they are facing each other, and also there's two birds on the top. So the dragon looking at the bird, the dragon looking at the bird, they have a little connection about the mystery life. Uh, uh, when, when also people they pass away, they're showing their. Um, this is a kind of uh, afterlife story, and how to make this one. We use a rice paper. This is a very uh, nice rice paper. And first, because this is a tire on the wall, pretending this is the wall, and first we spread some water on the wall. And we put the clean blank rice paper covering the tile. Then we're gonna use a very, very soft fabric to touch touch the paper, make sure they don't have any space between the texture and the rice paper. So we're gonna spread the water again to make sure the rice paper is half, I will say 50% of the rice paper is getting wet. Then we're gonna use a fabric, very soft fabric to touch, to pat <laughs> slightly, gently again, and until the whole paper covering the tire. Then we're gonna take it off, then we apply ink. We apply ink on the tire directly. We apply ink. And still we're gonna use uh, the tool, very small tool, and apply ink on the tire until it's fully covered. Then we, uh, we put the rice paper again, and we're gonna repeat, repeat it, patting, patting, <laughs> until all all the textures, all the images for the print on this piece of rice paper. The whole process will take four hours to finish, four hours. Then we just let it dry and you can frame. I didn't frame this one because I, I, I didn't find any person to help me to frame. After framing, you will see this very flat, very clean, very neat. It's it would be the perfect decoration for, for your house and also for the gallery. And then usually we use black ink, but sometimes we use red ink as well. It very depends on who you're gonna give to as a present. If someone have a wedding, we give them red one, the red ink. And if for personal connection, we keep the black one. Yeah, thank you.